everyone, and welcome back to the San Francisco 49er franchise on the Football Freaks Sports Network. I'm Husker Eurocat, and it's time once again for more Madden football. In a close game played at Wembley Stadium, the 49ers had a rough time making it into the end zone last week. Pro Bowl candidate Bilal Powell was all the 49er defense could have handled with an average of 10 and a half yards per carry. The only issue for the Jets is that they didn't feed him the ball enough. By the end of the third quarter, the Jets had taken the lead, but with two nice drives in the fourth, the Niners took back the lead. Eli Manning tried his best to bring the team back with a last minute drive, but fell short of a win. A Ray Ray Armstrong interception that sealed the deal for San Francisco and the 49ers escaped London with a win 19 to 14. This week, the Niners come back across the pond for a matchup with the other team that plays in MetLife Stadium, the New York Giants. Despite being in last place in their division, they're only one game behind the rest of the teams and have a mathematical chance to get into the playoffs with a losing record of seven and nine. One thing is for certain though, they must have a win today coupled with a lot of help from the rest of the teams in the division. If they're going to get it done, it'll be behind the arm of second year man Davis Webb who took over for Eli Manning in the passing game and former 49er Carlos Hyde who had a great game against this defense last season. Can he do it again? Or will the Niners capitalize on a chance to win home field advantage? Let's find out as the Giants and the 49ers get ready to rumble on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The Giants won the toss and elected to receive at their own 25 yard line. And Carlos Hyde gets the ball and he fumbles. It's knocked out by Navarro Bowman and Robinson Therese recovers the ball. And they're gonna have a official review on this one. And you can see here the hit that Navarro Bowman puts on Carlos Hyde. He loses the football and that is quite plain to see. But what are the officials going to say? The play stands and it is 49er ball just outside the 11 yard line. It gives to McKinnon. He takes it left side and he is in there for the touchdown. The 49ers take the early lead and you can see here Jarek McKinnon, all he did was <clears throat> Roll over the top of Dominic Rogers Cromarty. And he does his best moonwalk and, uh, well, he needs to play football for a living. Seven to nothing, 49ers. And the Giants will try this again. And, oh, there's offside. Charles Tapper jumped and it gives the Giants five free yards. And that is sad because Mike Hall pressured Webb into an incompletion and there is Charles Dapper getting to Carlos Hyde. So on third and four, they fake the give to Hyde and Webb is tackled in the backfield. So on the punt, Goodwin back to receive it, fumbles the football. Justin Pugh recovers it and E returns it back inside the 25 yard line. But there is a booth review on this. The officials want to take a second look. You can see JT Thomas coming down on the coverage and knocks the ball out of Marquise Goodwin's hands. That is unfortunate because I think the officials are gonna see that it's a fumble and it is. So the Giants have it at the 25 yard line. Webb goes back to pass, completes it to Odell Beckham Jr. 
He has nothing but green in front of him and all the way to the end zone for a giant score. Just a nice little swing out pass to OBJ and that is a solid block by Rhett Ellison on Ross Cockrell and into the end zone for the score to tie up this football game seven to seven. Now can the 49ers respond? Garoppolo completes it to Butler for a first down close to the 35 yard line. They do give him the 35, so it's first down, and McKinnon uh, tries to avoid Janoris Jenkins, and he is down with an injury as well. The pass this time to the left side, and it's picked off by Andrew Adams, and he's back inside 49er territory inside the 35-yard line. Garoppolo just threw it too far for George Kittle even to have a shot at that one. And you see there that Janoris Jenkins is out of the game and probably ended his season if the Giants can't make the postseason. Second and 15, Webb back to pass, throws complete to Sterling Shepard down to the five yard line. Now on third and goal, Hyde tries to make it up the middle and does not make it. So that brings out the rookie Warren Hansen for a 21 yard field goal and he puts it through even though he got interfered with by Robin, Richard Robinson. That puts the Giants on top 10 to seven. Are they on their way to a win? McKees Goodwin is back at the goal line and he brings it forward to the 25. Oh, he th fumbles the football. Oh my goodness. And the booth wants to take a look at this. Marquise Goodwin for the second time within just a few minutes loses the football. Eli Apple pops it out of there and the officials say it stands, so it is giant football at the 28 yard line. Webb back to pass, completes it to Sterling Sharp inside the 25. Now third and six. Webb back again, gets hit, and it's knocked away by Robinson Threezy. On comes Hansen for a 41 yard field goal and it's up and good right through the middle. The Giants lead by 13 to seven. And they still have Goodwin in and he brings it out past the 20, past the 30 spin move. He is gone folks. 30, 20, 10, touchdown. And that's one of the reasons why they have him in there. The fumbling is not part of his game plan. And look at how that spin move made the touchdown. And the 49ers take the lead 14 to 13. Webb back to pass, decides to run, and he has a first down out past the 35 yard line. Now from the 37, the pass goes to Ingram and he has a gain out to the 41. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter and your 49ers have taken the lead. Third and six. And the give, no, it's not to hide, it's a pass and long to OBJ and he has the reception at the 35 yard line inside 49er territory. And Carlos Hyde goes up the middle for an eight yard pickup. Second and two. And the give is to Beckham and he doesn't get out of the backfield. Third. And four out of the eye, and the ball is given to Vereen, and he has the first down inside the 25. Second and seven, the ball is given to Perkins, and he's inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. 
And now in the red zone with a chance to score. And the ball is in the end zone, knocked away by Ross Cockrell. That brings out Hansen for yet another field goal. And it's up and good. The Giants retake the lead 16 to 14. And from the 25 yard line, out of the eye formation, Juszczyk is sent in motion and McKinnon gets stopped in the backfield by Jason Pierre-Paul. Second and 14, the pass goes long but there is pass interference by Michael Hunter. And that gives the 49ers a fresh set of downs on second and 10. Garofalo, it completes it to Bell and they are inside giant territory. From the 43, Garofalo runs to his right and is sacked by Jason Pierre-Paul. A nine yard loss on the play. And he goes over the middle to McKinnon and he's inside the 40 yard line of the Giants. And on third down, Garoppolo goes right and he throws back across his body to Juszczyk for the first down. Now it's the 32 on a counter. Jones goes left and has a nice nine yard pickup. Third and inches out of the eye. The give is to Juszczyk up the middle and he has the first down. That brings us to the two minute warning with your score 16 to 14 Giants. At the 21 yard line, first down, Garoppolo throws complete to Bell and he's got it at the 11 yard line for a first down. Now the pass goes into the end zone and it's incomplete. Bryce Butler can't hang on to it. On second down, Garoppolo goes to the end zone again and Nick O'Leary has the position and gets the touchdown. And the 49ers go back on top, 21 to 16. Out of the shotgun, OBJ gets the reception just outside the 31, almost the 32. Second and three, Webb goes to Sterling Shepard and he has it past the 47 with Hyde the lone back. Webb goes back to pass and he is sacked. Eric Armstead getting him for a four yard loss. Now on third and 14, Webb goes back to pass again, goes long and it's into triple coverage and incomplete which brings us to the end of the second quarter with your score 21 to 16 Niners. This score is so deceiving at the half. You would think that each team did really well offensively in the first half, but the stats tell a different story. With a wild first quarter, two Niner fumbles and an interception, it's amazing. They still have the lead at the half. Will this change in the second? Welcome back to MetLife Stadium, everyone, for second half coverage of our seemingly uh, sloppy game between the Giants and 49ers. But the 49ers are definitely not on top of their game at the moment and need to make some improvements. For some thoughts from the coaches, let's go to Eurocat Baby on the sideline. I asked Coach McAdoo if he thought that losing Janoris Jenkins during the first half had any psychological effects on the team, and he really didn't think that was the issue. He said that losing Janoris is bad for the team, but was confident in Eli Apple's ability to fill in well. He thought the real issue in the first half was the Giants just didn't capitalize on the 49ers' mistakes well enough. He said these teams are matched up pretty well, and the game may well be won by the team that can make the most of the mistakes made by the other team. Coach Shanahan was visibly upset with the fumbles in the first quarter, but knows that the true test going forward is how they respond. 
He thought they'd done really well so far, and if they can keep the momentum going in the second half, they could come out of here with a win. We appreciate those thoughts, and I can see Coach Shanahan's point. It's going to be exciting to see what the 49ers can do in the second half because the teams are taking the field now. Let's take a look at the action. The 49ers trying to get something going at the 33-yard line out of the shotgun formation. And the pass goes over the middle to Tayshawn Jones, and he has the first down out to the 48-yard line. Jones up the middle again, and he has another nine-yard pickup. Second and one. Garoppolo goes over the middle to Bryce Butler, and he's inside the 30-yard line. Third and six. Tayshawn Jones gets caught in the backfield and finally stopped by Jason Pierre-Paul. That brings on Robbie Gold, and he puts the field goal right through the middle, and that brings us to 24-16 to Niners. Now it is time for the Giants to make a difference, and Webb throws it up the numbers, and he hits Sterling Shepard in stride and gets behind the defense, and he is all the way for the touchdown. Ross Cockrell tried to reach up to bat that one away, but he needed a ladder for that one. And Sterling Shepard gets the touchdown, and it is now 22 to 24. They're going for two. The pass out to the right is good, and how did Sterling Shepard get the, his hands on that one? That should have been picked off and taken all the way back. And that ties up our ball game at 24, and the pass goes out to Jones. He has the first down out past the 40-yard line. Now McKinnon off the counter, goes up the middle, and he's in the clear. Oh, all the way, 10-5. Touchdown 49ers. This is why they call him Jet McKinnon because all he needs is a split second and he's gone. 31-24, San Francisco takes the lead and after a couple of three and outs, Marquise King puts it out of bounds at the six yard line. Now it's the Giants' turn, and DeForest Buckner gets a little too anxious and jumps across, giving the Giants five free yards. Out of the eye formation, a, on a broken play, and Webb got three yards out of it. Third and two. The ball is given to Perkins, and he's up the middle and has the first down. At the 18-yard line, second and 10. The ball is given to Vereen, and he's forward to the 23-yard line. Malcolm Smith jumps and gives the Giants another five yards. Second and five now. Perkins up the middle for big yardage over the 35-yard line, and a first down for the Giants. That brings us to the end of the third quarter with your score 31-24, 49ers. From about the 37-yard line, Webb decides to run, and he is taken down by a blitzing Duke Iannaccio. Out of the I formation, Charles Tapper makes the sack. So that gives the ball back to the 49ers. On first and 10 from the 30 three-yard line. The pass is complete out to Nick O'Leary. First and 10 from the 46. And Jones goes right and has a nine-yard pickup. Second and just inches to go for the first down. Garoppolo decides to go over the middle to McKinnon, and he has another first down to the 35-yard line. And now McKinnon goes left side and is inside the 30-yard line. Second and four. And this time the pass will go to George Kittle. Oh my goodness, he is clear into the end zone. 
That had to be a blown assignment somewhere because Kittle was wide open going for another 49er score. 38 to 24. Can the Giants come back from this? And Smith goes up the middle and not on plays like that. A fullback up the middle just isn't going to get it done. And Davis throws an interception to Prince Amukamara, and he is inside the 45-yard line of the Giants. You see, he just jumped that route, and the 49ers have it in Giant territory. Now at the 42-yard line, McKinnon goes to the right side and has another first down at the 32. From the I formation again, play action pass, and Garoppolo gets away from the first and gets sacked by Jason Pierre-Paul. He is having one great game, folks. Now on the pitch out to McKinnon, he goes the left side and is inside the 30-yard line, and Devon Kennard is down and injured, hobbling off the field and could be his hip. Third and five for the 49ers, and Jones doesn't get the first down. And that brings us to the two-minute warning with your score, 38 to 24. Now let's go to Eurocat Baby for an update. An update on Devon Kennard is that he has been battling hip bursitis, and unfortunately for the Giants, it'll keep him out for the rest of this game. For now, they're going to rely on JT Thomas to take over that spot. The Giants are playing for dignity now because it looks grim for them. But you can never say never, right? Yeah, that normally that is right. But things being what they are, I don't know if the Giants can come back in this one. Robbie Gold is on for a 41-yard field goal, and it's up and right through the middle. And the 49ers have extended this lead 41 to 24. King sends this one deep and Harris brings it out nine yards deep in the end zone and barely gets over the 10 yard line. From the eye and the 11 yard line, Webb trying to make a difference, goes up the middle and he gets the first down out to the 24 yard line. A minute 46 and counting out of the shotgun. Webb throws across the middle to Sterling Shepard and he has a six yard gain. Second down. The pass this time goes again to Sterling Shepard and he has the first down. And they're playing dink and dunk football and that is not gonna get it done. Webb throws and it's complete. Jarrell Adams has it in plus territory down to the 44 yard line of the 49ers and Harris catches that one over the middle at the 39. Third and five, Webb throws long and it's out of the end zone. Fourth down and the Giants have to go for it. Five yards to pick up and Ingram doesn't get the first down. Stopped by Ray Ray Armstrong and that brings on the second team for the 49ers and just up the middle and Tayshawn Jones gets a nine yard pickup. And that brings us to the end of our football game with your score 41 to 24 Niners. Talk about dominating the game late. I'm not sure if the Giants just ran out of gas or the Niners started playing great toward the end. But after the Giants evened up the game with that outstanding reception by Sterling Shepard and following it up with a two-point conversion in the third quarter, it was all San Francisco. They just couldn't keep up the pace after Jet McKinnon's 59-yard touchdown run toward the end of the third. 
throw in there, Prince of Mukamara's interception, and you could stick a fork in the Giants because they were done. It seems that neither quarterback had the best day, but the second year man out of Cal had the better showing passing the ball. Carlos Hyde got held to just seven yards on the ground, and the running game for the 49ers came alive. A good chunk of that was McKinnon's 59-yard scamper, but Jarek and Tayshon combined for an average just north of 8.6 yards per carry after gaining just 19 yards on the ground in the first half. McKinnon put in a 91-yard day that put him at 1,113 yards for the season. Unfortunately, Lester Jordan only had one catch for 11 yards in his last two games. The worst is that he had two drop passes in this game against the Giants that most likely would have put him over the 1,000 yard mark. Duke Iannaccio and Navarro Bowman led the defense this week and I wish I could say that we had a real ball hawk on our team, but three interceptions that's the most that anyone had for the entire season. And that was Bowman and Robinson, the backup corner. I do have to say that the 49ers played a lot of nickel and dime defense this season. So seeing a backup corner with good stats like Richard Robinson doesn't really surprise me. Now that the regular season is over, we get to see who finally won divisions and how the playoff race ended up. In the AFC North, the Bengals won their division with a two-game lead over the Steelers. In the South, we had the Jaguars winning that division with the same margin over the Texans. The East Division saw the Bills beat out the Patriots by one game, but the Bills managed one of the wild card spots. And in the West, the Chargers win the division via the head-to-head -head rule. The Chargers won both meetings, therefore they win their division. And look at this log jam in the AFC home field advantage race. Five teams with a 10 and six record, so how do you decide who wins home field advantage? Well, the Raiders get kicked to the curb because they're only a wild card team. Next, we go to the head to head matchup, but none of the teams played all three other teams in this season. So we go to the conference games and we have a winner. The Jags had the best record in for the conference, so they get the nod for home field advantage. Now for the NFC. In the north, we have the Vikes edging the wild card, winning Lions by a game. In the South, the Panthers win that division in, well, <laughs> a landslide. For the East, the Cowboys win that division by a game at only an 8-8 eight and eight record. And in the West, just two seasons into the Kyle Shanahan era, the 49ers win the division by three games over the seeming favorite, Seahawks. They clobbered the Eagles in their last game of the season 41 to 10 and therefore gained a playoff spot joining the Lions as the other wild card team. I think that it came all the way to a tiebreaker number six which is a strength of schedule and there the Panthers had the edge because their opponents records were a little better than the 49ers. So the Panthers win home field advantage in the NFC through the playoffs. And here are the matchups for wild card weekend. The Bills travel out to Los Angeles to play the Chargers. In a divisional rivalry game, the Lions travel to play the Vikings. They split the regular season, so which team will be motivated enough to put forth the effort to win this game. The Raiders visit the cold of Foxborough to face the Patriots, and the Seahawks travel down to Dallas to play the Cowboys. 
And here are the results of Wild Card Weekend. The traveling Bills took care of business against the Chargers. The Vikings beat the Lions for the second time this season. In a landslide victory, the Patriots took care of the Raiders. And what I thought was the upset of the weekend is that the Seahawks were beaten by the Cowboys. And not just a little win, but convincingly. Each had a pick and a fumble, so that wasn't the answer. But Ezekiel Elliott ran wild in that game and took the boys to another playoff victory. So here is what the divisional weekend looks like. On Saturday, the Bills play in Jacksonville, and the Cowboys travel to Charlotte to play the Carolina Panthers. For our Sunday matchups, we have the Patriots on the road to meet the Bengals. It'll be interesting to see if the Bengals go one and done again. And the Vikings visit the 49ers in Levi's Stadium. What frightens me the most about this Vikings team is their defense. First, take a look at the turnover ratio. They know how to take the ball away, and with Garoppolo's gunslinging mentality, this could be trouble if the Niners can't get the rush established. The only thought that gives me any relief at all is that Minnesota has the 25th ranked pass defense in the league. Now, if Jimmy can get into any kind of rhythm at all, he might be able to have a good day passing. On the rushing front, Dalvin Cook has to shoulder that responsibility for the Vikings since Latavius Murray is out for this game. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or not, but we'll find out. I know the pass offense isn't ranked very high in the league, but with Stephon Diggs in the lead, that could prove to be a frightening bunch as well. Once again, thank you for tuning in to our coverage of the San Francisco 49er franchise on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Please keep in mind that if you enjoyed this video, leave a like so that others can enjoy it as well. And if you would like to be notified when there is a new one, simply subscribe by clicking on my icon at the end of the video. The 49ers have a serious challenge as the Vikings come to town. I think the big question in this one is can the 49ers move the ball on this very stingy defense? And probably just as important, can they keep the football out of the hands of the Viking offense? Be with us to see it unfold as San Francisco takes on Minnesota to see who goes to the NFC Championship game. For Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew here, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.